Okay, y'all, so I'm here to give my thoughts on Monique, honey. It's been a couple years since we mentioned Monique. But she finally back. She done got a Netflix special after years of complaining, cussing out darn going Lee Daniels, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, and quite a few others that's been added to the list over the years. Most recently, Sherry Shepard and Kim Whitley. Congratulations on the NAACP Image Award, um, nonetheless, from the two funny mamas. Um, but yeah, Monique had a comedy special, and I was like, ugh, I hope this goes, like, I, I hope we ain't gonna get too much preachy Monique whatnot, so I want the comedy, um, or whatnot. Um, I didn't think she needed to go in on the Oprah Winfrey jokes or anything of the sorts, and sure enough, she did not touch them one point at, at no time. The only person she went in on was Lee Daniels a little bit, in fun, because he was there in the audience. We got to see that Lee Daniels was there. T.S. Madison, Fine Mo, who is, you know, Madison's assistant. Uh, we seen Dargon Wiley was in the audience. <laughs> you know, no shade to Wiley. But, yeah, we saw Wiley was in the audience and quite a few other. It, it was based in Atlanta. It was an hour and 15 minutes. And I went on ahead and purchased my subscription, so... <laughs> I don't seen it now. I'm trying to figure out what else I got to watch on here. Well, I guess I can watch Oliver's show since I now finally got Netflix. I can go ahead and watch The Circle and see what that's about. Not to be confused with The Circle down here on YouTube. Uh, shout out to Nunu. But yeah, it was an hour and 15 minute storytelling of her family upbringing. Growing up with strong, bull, you know, masculine women. Actually growing up with handsome, darn going uncle aunties. And when I tell you that uh, Monique's life mirrors mine in so much, where I felt myself tearing up at certain parts of this, like Monique sent me through the whole emotions. And I think that this is by far Monique's most impactful. <clears throat> Was it her most funniest? No. <laughs> did it have me busting out laughing a couple times? Yes, it did. Uh, but this was like a whole array of stuff. It was a coming out, literally. <laughs> she came out and said some deep, dark family secrets regarding the uncle, the grandmother. She didn't touch on the mom and father disco round. She she let them live post-mortem. Uh, she didn't darn going to touch on that situation too tough. She darn going to brought up special education, something that I can empathize with because I was falsely put in special ed, even though my reading level was always above average or whatnot. Um, I had the same illiterate bitch of a darn going sperm donor had me darn going to lock this special ed. And here every year, I was hopeful that I got out that mood. And they ain't let me out. They, they, I think they darn going finally eased up on that shit come junior year. It, it took me all the way to junior year to have somewhat of a normal darn on life. Where I was in normal class. I mean, now, ninth and 10th grade, they acclimated you a little bit. It wasn't until 11th grade where you was no longer dominantly in one classroom where you was able to float around with everybody else. And due to being stifled that long, it actually contribute to me having social issues. Because since I was put in um, classes with people, and, and see, me, I was put in behavior. I wasn't even special. It, it was a combination of folks who had some special needs, but mostly it was people who had anger issues. And yeah, I had anger issues, but bitch, I'm from the Merc. <laughs> like, and, and I was a reactionary person. I never started, well... Now, when I was in kindergarten, I was the one that was starting shit. But when I got old, I wasn't the one to start shit. I was always reacting to shit. And and as a consequence, they put me in Dargon BED. So, and I didn't Dargon get acclimated until I was grown. Because y'all know I was held back a year. Uh, so, theoretically, you wait till I was 18 to Dargon finally associate me with the world. And throughout my whole childhood, you can find me into this isolated bubble amongst Dargon problematic people. And by, uh, you know, just based off of the limited people that was exposed to me, I Dargon sheltered myself so much so to the point where then when you Dargon just told me, oh, okay, you can finally go back out into the world, there was no proper transition skill. 
Nobody didn't sit you down and are going to say, okay, this is how you going to, you know, build up your... Because all that is taught when you're younger. You know, certain things go without saying as you, you know, is with, you know, your fellow classmates when you're young. It's like you build up those developing skills. And due to me being put in the doggone classroom and not being taken out properly because of a literate doggone crackhead pretty much for non-attensive purposes who doggone did not read the paperwork, did not even attempt to doggone get me out or anything, even though my grades were exceptional, even though I was getting early college recommendations, I was doggone ranking the top of the county for, you know, science classes and everything, getting scholarships even to veterinarian school. At no point in time did nobody think to say, okay, this bitch ain't damn special. Let's go ahead and get her on out this program and now I'm going to get her back into regular society. You wait until I'm darn going 18 and then now it develops into something much worse because you compound that on with trauma similar to Monique with, you know, the upbringing, you know, the family with the gambling problems and the drinking problems. And the internalized homophobia, you know, a, a clutched on to the cloth of the church and everything of that sort. And then you battling inner feelings that you cannot express to the darn loved ones. And you and your loved ones pretty much end up dying without them knowing. Now, granted, in my case, my great grandmother, she developed Alzheimer's very early on when she was ten when I was ten. She she ended up knowing uh, sometime throughout that, and she accepted me, and then she'll forget, <laughs> or what nice, and then she'll doggone think I'm one of her cousins from the 1940s, because she was born in 1922, um, so, yeah, <laughs> that was my doggone upbringing in a nutshell, just a little bit, um, y'all know I've dealt with, uh, now, I didn't deal with the, the touching or anything of that sort, um, so I can't relate to Monique on that, I had a couple close calls with some teachers, trying to insult me, but y'all know Diva Wan was too much of a mouthy girl to go out like that, honey. So, honey, they, they knew real quick they couldn't try me. They No, they tried, but they learned that it wasn't going to be successful. But, yeah, listening to Monique tell us about her auntie, that's the dyke or whatnot, nice, and me having... Matter of fact, when y'all see my vlogs, I just did a, a work vlog coming home the other day, y'all seen my handsome cousin walking down the street, even though she was a little blue dot in the background. In the background. Oh, Lord, there's some stories. There, there are some stories I can say about my cousin, honey. Mostly good. I ain't got no bad experience or anything, but honey, that, ooh, child. When I tell you I can empathize with Monique 100%, even though we come from two different areas, of she comes from up north in Baltimore. And I'm from Vietnam, down in Fayetteville, North Carolina. She's a northern bitch. I'm a doggone country southern bitch. She's doggone... Actually, she's damn near the same age as the egg donor. She's 54, going on 55. The egg donor is 55. So, whole generation difference. And yet, the, the, the traumas and stuff is still the same. Now, the only thing I can't relate to congruently is the cool cat. <laughs> honey, I knew I knew when I was young, honey. Even from the age of seven, I knew I, I liked the little boys, honey. Then little boys went to teenagers. Teenagers went to grown men as I darn gone got grown. Hell, it, and hell, by the time I was even like 15, <laughs> sadly, we, I can say that, hell, my college key, I mean, my, uh, <laughs> My fellow classmates didn't stand a chance, honey. I've had people flirt with me in high school. Honey, I was entertaining the grown men <laughs> by that time, honey. Diva Wine lived quite a wild life. Just like with Monique where she said she darn going had the darn going. She was a semi-ho. Semi-ho. <laughs> Even to the point where I tell y'all I get it in twice a year and or whatnot. Semi-ho. <laughs> So when I tell you I broke down in tears, and then I laughed, and then I darn honey, Monique just had me going through all of the darn on motions for an hour and 15 minutes. She came out at the end as a, a light bisexual or bi-curious. She, pretty much she's a darn dominant uh, lesbian. She go on and say, 
that she was afraid to tell Sydney of all people. And I know I know some people was giggling. I was like, honey, people already think that Sydney's a damn queen. You know, his damn self. It was like, honey, you was already halfway there to your dream to hear the darn folks in the street tell it. Because, hell, people think that you be putting the strap on for damn Sydney. So it's like, well, hell. It's like... <laughs> You darn gonna talk about you want to introduce a woman in the situation, honey? It's just a menage a trois with darn on three ki uh, 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 th uh, with three kitty cats, honey. Except one kitty cat's a look a lot longer than the other, or is it? Cause we don't know Sydney size, and nor is that our business or whatnot. Oh, uh, but anyways, yeah, y'all. Monique darn gonna came out as a bisexual woman tonight, and. Come on through, Mo. Honey, she darn gold represented the bi community proud, honey. And then even to the reference of darn gold, her saying that Oprah, that she told Oprah and them to suck her D, she was darn gold emulating her darn gold uncle who told, her uncle told her grandmother that she could suck his dark. No, she said specifically, you can kiss my ass. I was like, oh God. Child, what I tell you, that sound like something that my Uncle Russell would have said. <laughs> May he rest wherever he darn gonna be. Uh, I grew up with an Uncle Russell who was a cross-dresser. Very feminine. Or whatnot. Said I didn't know his tea or whatnot. I was confused as hell. I was like, okay, some days he, you know, he's dressed in the suit. And I still to this day didn't get any confirmation whether, you know, Uncle Russell was really aunt. Russell or, Russell or whatnot because it's like I didn't get a confirmation whether you know he was a cross dresser or whether he was somebody like me you know trans or whatnot I'm starting to lean probably more to trans because she was darn on beautiful 24 7 even her suits she still had their dragonistic flair but they just call it a cross dress but why am I going off of hood bitches that don't know nothing about you know, the LGBT and damn detail. But, yeah. She never corrected. He, she, and them never corrected them. Uh, went by both pronouns. Hell, basically like like me with this damn job. I go by both pronouns just to get along with the get along child. So, yeah, Monique was talking about her uncle. <laughs> told that grandmother, Dargon, you can kiss my Dargon D if you don't like me, honey. Fuck you. Child, and then it was a whole bunch of other stuff, even down to the uh the high school friend. I'm not going to give away too much, but yeah, y'all, it was an hour and 15 minutes. It was darn on hilarious. Um, not her most funniest material, but her most impactful. She delivered a powerful darn on uh, backstory of hers. She done took us from childhood to adulthood to where she's at now. <laughs> And she did it in such a way where it made us laugh. It made us teary-eyed. And they are going to bust out laughing again all the way through. Because, our, because like I said, we thought that she was going to be, you know, a little bit too much, you know, sermon. You know, more talking and not the jokes. But this was a perfect balance for me. So, Monique, I loved it. It was worth the six ninety nine. Well, seven dollars and eighty three cents. I'm going to count the damn sales tax. It was worth every darn on bit of money. The darn on see the darn on comedy skit. Uh, now that movie though, nah. We 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 got to work better on the movie, honey. The reading, what? Mm, I had to read the reading, honey. <laughs> the reading wasn't given, but this made up for that, honey. So shout out to Moni. But that's it, y'all. Those are my thoughts on My Name is Monique, the Netflix comedy special. I definitely implore any of y'all to check it out. If y'all was hard-headed to darn going, still watch this all the way through and not see it first, go ahead and definitely check it on out. And I will see y'all soon with more videos. Mwah.